Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here with Retire Different. Retire Different is a place for people who want to ask really great questions in order to make good financial decisions as they prepare for retirement. And we invite guests to come and talk to us about topics related to this. And today we're going to talk about the people that are there to help you in that planning journey. Now my two guests today are first Scott Whitehawk. Scott is the um, owner of August Wealth Management. He is a certified financial planner and fiduciary advisor. His clients are individuals, families, and nonprofits. And his passion in life is to help people prepare individualized uh, financial plans. So welcome, Scott. Thanks, Margaret. Good to be here. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. And also Pam Kruger. Now, Pam is an investing and financial expert. She is a television and author, a television personality and author, and she is the founder of WealthRamp, which is a very interesting online tool that connects consumers like you with fiduciary advisors. She is also a co-host of PBS Money Track. So welcome, Pam. Hey, Margaret. How, How are you? Are you? I'm good. You got your cup of coffee. I've got mine here. I've got a new cup. How about you, Scott? I went and found a cup. You went and found a mug. Poor Scott. We we do this just for fun. And uh, Scott only had a had a plastic cup, so we told him he had to get a mug. So thank you, Scott. (laughs) I'm so happy to have you both here today because, as you know, um, when you're thinking about retirement, you you need some help. And and at some point, you admit (laughs) that it's probably good to find someone to guide you. And Pam, tell us basically what the options are for people and why you have a preference for for one over the other. Um, For me, it's all about, you know, quality, obviously, is the first and foremost. So, So it's just a big jumble and a big confusing mess of advisors who who are out there who do everything and anything. Some are are less qualified and some are very qualified. Some are truly fiduciary advisors, which means that legally they must put your financial best interests ahead of any of their own priorities. And others will say that they act as fiduciaries or they behave as fiduciaries or that they believe in the fiduciary standard, but it's all muddled together. And that's because you can't regulate or legislate morality. Right. Right. So that means that somebody out there, in this case, I stepped up to the plate to do this, has to look through this population of advisors and say, wait a second, who truly walks the walk of a fiduciary and is is willing to put that in an oath in writing on on his or her firm's letterhead. And I'm going to, I can tell you, you know, a couple of tips on how you can really find out and really figure out who's So let me ask you a question. Is there like a a label? I mean, is there like a designation that is regulated in some way? It's, It's like you say, it's really up to people like you to put together tools to, find these people like Scott. What, what are the qualities that Scott has that makes him a, a great fiduciary advisor? So, you know, I wish that a credential like a CFP, which stands for Certified Financial Planning, which is kind of the gold standard in terms of certification. Right. But because, Margaret, this is not a profession, it's not a doctor or a lawyer where there's a legal credential or a a level of education one must pass in order to be able to practice in this, in this business, it's not a profession. Anybody. So what, what yeah, sorry. And that means that anybody can actually, anybody who can pass a series of exams and, and attain the CFP um, is that's a good start. But in other words, I wish there were a really easy way to go fishing for a, fantastic fiduciary advisor. So Scott, you know, being that he's right here with us and he wouldn't be here with us and with me if he were not a vetted fiduciary fee only advisor. So Scott, would you agree with me that if I'm your potential client, I'm meeting you for the very first time and I'm looking for an advisor. The first question that's going to help me the most to understand who you are is is a question that feels a little uncomfortable. It's me asking you, Hey Scott, how do you get paid? Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't talk about pay, right? It's always something we keep kind of quiet about. Um, But it's a very important thing to ask 
And it's a very important thing to understand because we know that when we work with other people, other businesses, they're making money. And it's important for us to understand how they make that, why they make it, and what really goes behind that. Because it's not just the dollars that go from the consumer to the provider. It's, it's the values that go in back of that as well. So Scott, how do you get paid? How do you make money? Mm -hmm. So I am a fee-only advisor, which essentially means that I only bring in money based on the assets that I manage for a client. I don't sell any products. I don't um, earn money any other way. We, we do have the ability to bill out uh, on an hourly or a project basis for, for people if they prefer that. But I, you know, if, if I recommend somebody to get an insurance that covers uh, a, ter a term insurance policy, I'm helping them find that, but I'm not making money on that. So I can be an advocate with them. And that is, is why you have to know. Because yeah. Margaret, can you imagine if you're going to get unbiased advice about how much insurance do I really need? Are you really going to get that from an insurance agent who sells insurance? No, because they're paid on the insurance policy that they, they sell. sell. They get a commission. They get some kind of commission. Because that person's role is to, quote unquote, sell insurance, yeah. not advise on it. So in many cases, Margaret, um, the folks who are in the sales roles are not as educated or as experienced in planning. So Scott, because he's paid either by the hour, by the project, or on retainer, Scott, your client, you're working only and directly for your clients. You're not working for an insurance company or brokerage firm that's going to give you kickbacks mm -hmm. for selling Correct. their stuff. Correct. So, Correct. so Scott, Scott, you did mention that you, you, you would earn money on their assets. Do, do you take, do you, as part of your work to take in people's money, like if they have a certain amount, they want you to invest for them. Do you do, you do that kind of thing and then get some kind of a commission from that? Or is that not something that fiduciaries or CP? FPs do? Uh, so I will typically, in a typical client, they'll come in and have, let's just say $500,000 in assets. We put that into an investment account for them and I bill on a percentage of that. Okay. And, okay. and that's it. And what that does is that also gets them access to me for everything else that might come up. Okay. So, and that would be $5,000 yeah. a year, but that's if okay. he was charging a full 1% because 1% okay. Okay. you know would be, would be equal to the 500 $5,000 right. and that would include the financial planning the time etc everything all in and usually it can be it can be less than that as well so someone with a half million dollar portfolio doesn't have to freak out and worry that wait a second $5,000 a year that's too much. It, 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 I'm saying that that's kind of oh, typically yeah. what it could be. Um, if you have enough of a financial planning situation where there's some complications and some tax strategy and all of that blended in. But you know, you guys, there's something that's so important that I just found out a couple of days ago. We had a client come to WealthRamp with $40 million and the client, Scott, didn't know that he's not giving you his money. In other words, yeah. a lot of times people of want to an independent fiduciary advisor and they'll say, but is my money going to be safe? And, and the answer is the money doesn't get invested at Scott's firm. Right. You use Charles Schwab, Fidelity. Mm -hmm. right. um, you use TD Ameritrade. Now, you know that, Margaret, but uh, there are a lot of people out there yeah, who don't. are scared to use yeah. a Scott because they assume that they're going to write the check for the investment to Scott and he could be a Madoff. Yeah. But you see, right. by having the brokerage firm, a discount brokerage firm, which means you're saving money. Scott, and you, you guys work out where you want to keep your money. And then you yep. get separate sets of statements, right, Scott? So you get the statement from Scott that tells you how you're doing. And then you mm -hmm. get the statement from Charles Schwab or, or uh, Fidelity or Scott Trade that verifies that. Is that right, Scott? Correct, correct. So we call that custody. Uh, in my case, I don't take custody of assets. I don't put them in right. an account that I own. Yeah. Uh, I will put them at TD Ameritrade or Fidelity, as you said, and the client will give me the, a limited power of attorney to just interact with their account on their behalf. And should they be unhappy with me or, and want to leave, 
they just call Fidelity or Schwab and say, hey, cut his access, please. Uh, and, and it stays right there. So it's always theirs. So Pam, how does that differ from a financial advisor? How does that differ from someone who is just offering what they market themselves as offering financial advice? And I mean, I know you've said planning is kind of the differentiator there in a way, but I mean, what, what are the other things that Scott might do that would make a fiduciary more uh, of a partner than, than a financial advisor in, in quotes? Uh, well, first of all, by not receiving any kickbacks or commissions and getting paid only by you really means that Scott is reporting only to you. You are the employer in that case. You're the client. Right. Okay. It's like you have an attorney. So when you take away that incentive, what you're left with is a decision about trustworthiness. And there's no piece of paper and there's no law and there's nothing except doing your homework to, to make sure that the person who you're trusting for not only the planning, but the investment management is truly following fiduciary best practices. Um, Scott, what would you say is the differentiator for you in your own yeah. mind? As you probably have this question, you have to ask yourself on a daily basis, how am I different as a fiduciary than other advisors who are also independent? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, well, as a fiduciary, my needs aren't part of the equation. It's always the client's needs. So if I have a client who is interested in taking money out of a portfolio that I manage in order to buy a three unit uh, apartment building where they're going to live in one unit and rent out the others, we crunch numbers. We talk about the lifestyle impact of doing that sort of thing. And then if, if everything lines up, we say, man, this is the right decision to make. So let's withdraw whatever we need to withdraw so that you can purchase that property. That's going to hurt my personal income, but that's immaterial. That's the right thing, yeah. It's the that's right a thing great for this example. No. That's a great example. And plus also the knowledge level that Scott has about real estate. People don't think of financial advisors as discussing personal uh, real estate like an income property. Mm -hmm. You think of them as the stock market and retirement and annuities and things sure, like that. Right. So you yeah. don't think of them that way. But that's, the, that's another, dis I'm glad you asked that question, Mark, because that's another differentiator between Scott. They're going, he, Scott and advisors like him who are truly fiduciary are truly going to have a really good understanding, the education and the background and the experience yeah. to understand you don't just hold stocks. Maybe you've made your entire wealth off your real estate. Right. Hey, hey, Scott, I have a question for you, Scott, because presumably you weren't born a fiduciary. <laughs> you know, so, so you, at some time in your life, you probably did something else and that worked in a bookstore or, or whatever you do uh, on your journey. Um, but one day you must have decided, I'm going to become a fiduciary. I'm going to become a certified financial planner and I'm going to go through the training or whatever. Tell me what was in your mind when you made that decision. Uh, I, I did it from the standpoint of what if this was not a passion of mine? What if this was not an interest of mine? Uh, and I had a different type of career, but needed to employ somebody who was going to help me successfully navigate my financial life until, okay. until I pass, essentially, and then beyond to my children. Uh, who do I want sitting across from me? What do I want? Right. And before I sort of knew what a fiduciary encompassed, I, I, I think we all think I'd want somebody who's looking out for me at all times and started educating myself and figuring out mm -hmm. how can this exist? Does it exist? And then once I started finding the parameters, I said, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, that's a really, that was a really interesting question, Margaret, because I want to ask a quickie here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Why didn't you want to become an advisor like I was when I was 24 at a brokerage firm selling products because I can make a lot more money a lot faster, frankly, right yeah. up front? Um, uh, it, for me personally, it was, yes, I understood the math behind it. And, and you know, to advise on a million dollars versus to sell a million dollar policy is, is staggeringly different in terms of income. Um, but it, it just felt like I could add much more value 
than being a simple component of a transaction. I, I can be, as I mentioned earlier, a, a partner with somebody versus just just uh, interacting with one small component of their financial lives. And that was that was quite important to me. Well, this is what I think we need in this conversation. And I'm so happy that you're both here to talk about this because when people are retiring differently now, they're looking for people like you, Scott, and, and you, Pam, that are caring you know, at, at the point, I mean, I know Pam, you just go crazy with all your work you do trying to pull people together and find the right people. And you do this, you know, you don't charge anybody for that. You're just doing it because you want to, to create a world where people can find the Scots of the world. Well, I do, I do make money. You need to know how I make money. Yeah. And the way I make money on WealthRamp is when a client, I have about 250 advisors who are like Scott in the sense that they're all fiduciary. They're all different people with right. different positions. Um, but when a client gets matched with Scott and that client signs on and begins paying Scott and Scott's billing them, then Scott has to share with me by contract right. a portion of his fee. But Scott by contract is not allowed to bump up the client's okay. fee. Okay account for in me. order to pay for you now what that's i and, and i appreciate you sharing that pam that's really important and people might be thinking that that but what i was thinking about was the hours that i know go into your life you know the late night uh you know work that you do to try to find people you're not charging anybody for that that's what i really meant is that you are putting a lot of your heart and soul as scott is putting heart and soul into what he's doing because he cares he wants it to be a better world for retirees. Yeah, I don't see anybody else having the take, take it, I mean, seriously. I've had a lot of people say to me, oh, I'd love to do what you're doing, Pam, because it'd be fun to vet these advisors and do the right thing. But they, they have kids, they have families, they have ties that keep them from being able to do that. I'm unusual. I don't have that. I don't have a big family. I don't have those expenses. I took four years to build a platform and populate it with advisors like Scott. And that is the value. The has time to vet each advisor. So Scott, has it been working with Pam? Is she tough, Cookie? <laughs> <laughs> she is uh, boundless with energy, <laughs> as, you, as you know and you can tell. Um, it, it's been good to, uh, I've talked about having a partner for my clients. Uh, uh, she's been a partner for me. Um, That's great. She's challenged some things with me. She's had me focus on different issues. Uh, just have me think of things differently, which which can only either open my eyes to a different viewpoint or solidify my my current thinking. So it, it's been it's been wonderful. I'm I'm so fortunate. Well, I really appreciate the, th the two of you being here because I think what you've highlighted is the human side of money. You know, that money is not just about the numbers. It's about the humanity. It's the people. And like people like you, Scott, that make a decision in your career to do something that's, that's just because it's the right thing. And the same with you, Pam, that you do, the, you look for these people to connect because it's the right thing to do. And hopefully um, you've got uh, some insight now into this whole idea of who fiduciary advisors are and who financial advisors are. If you've got questions, please uh, leave them in the section below so we can get back to you and, and answer them. Pam, where do people reach you again? What's your website? Um, wealthramp.com. Like wealth ramp. ramp up your wealth. Wealth ramp. up the ramp. <laughs> yeah, wealthramp.com. And it's Pam at wealthramp.com. Okay. Very simple. And, and I'm, Scott, I'm always accessible, like all the time. You are, I know. And, and, and Scott, what about you? Where can we reach you? Or do you have a website or some kind of a online presence? Of course, of course. My website is augustwealthmanagement.com. Okay. And you can contact me on there in multiple ways. I appreciate you both being here. Thank you again for answering that very uh, convoluted and complex question. And we'll, we'll talk again soon. Thank you again. Appreciate both. you, Margaret. Thank Thanks you. So much, Thank Margaret. you. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our Retire Different YouTube channel and check out our website at retiredifferent.com. We are a community of people who are asking questions and trying to make good financial decisions so that we can have an amazing retirement. We'll be looking at our relationship to money and also places that we can go for support, advice and inspiration.